before going into the details about these two dimensions, uh, primarily it is important to understand uh, what kind of data, but because we are now discussing in the first front side, first side of the information retrieval search systems. So now it is very important to understand what kind of information our system will be processing, what kind of information our system will be producing to the user, right? So broadly, if you see, uh, because we have we have conducted a lot of discussion about that. Okay, you are designing a web search system, so documents and web pages will be the input. If you're designing a desktop search system, the different files uh, will be the input for your system, something like that. So uh, naturally, uh, if you place all these possible types of types of input, uh, and if you need to produce these uh, retrieve or process details to the user, you can broadly classify into two broad categories, two broad classes, right? Uh, because we are talking about visualization. So whenever we are retrieving something, whenever we are, uh, you know, extracting something from the repository or maybe from the system, it will be appearing in two forms, two types, right, for the user at least. So uh, one type is uh, typically called a text data, text-based details to a user. And uh, second type could be of type document. So document, I'm not saying a text, a specific uh, document like a Word file, PDF file, that is okay. But along with it, a user, a particular user, a particular individual can be also type document, right? So you can have this analogy that a document is equivalent to a human being as far as system concerned. So if you are designing a social media search system, social media search system, a individual user is equivalent to a document. Like in the document, we can have some details and one document can have some relations or correlation with the other documents, something like that, right? So uh, that's why I'm saying uh, we could place all these types of details, all these types of extracted details into two broad categories as far as the as far as the front side of the system concerned where user is available user is trying to gain some information gain some uh, details from the gui right so uh, this relation you should have whenever we are designing a system front end system on the top of search system whenever we are producing uh, an interface to the user it is very important to understand that what kind of details we will be pushing to the user is it a simple text details? Is it a simple document detail? So when we produce documents, we could achieve something. We could achieve only few things on the GUI. When we produce the text data, a details in the form of text. Text means it could, it could be a simple keyword. It could be a set of keywords. It could be a paragraph, something like that, right? So if you go into the properties of these two details, text and document, they're having different properties, right? So as, as you, you have started exploring the research literatures now, because you are going to the different works in the project part, uh, as far as I'm taking student concern and for the PhD student, uh, PhD scholars concern also, they're now uh, going into the literature. So soon you will have this realization that when we say text, it is one, one, one type of thing, one type of, uh, uh, you know, detail. And when we say document, it will have one type of details because they are different on the properties, semantics concern. So that's why uh, we can achieve some things on the document data. We can achieve some things on the text data. You cannot say that both are similar. Uh, on the same, on the both, we can have same type of analytics. We could achieve same types of analytics, right? Something like that. So these things will be uh, having some uh, clarity on upon you, uh, maybe uh, maybe one or two months down the line, right? So let's understand whenever we have these two situations what we can achieve that's one thing and how we can achieve right so if you have if your system is having or uh, processing text data right text data and you have to design an interface then what we can achieve what 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 are the possible uh, analytics or what what are the possible search operations we can achieve so in the case of text uh, data or details in the text form we can achieve analytical and similarity type of searches right so it, these two types of searches could be easily achieved. That's what the purpose of saying at this point is, right? Similarly, if you could go to the document-based data into the system, uh, you can achieve browsing 
and exploratory search kind of situation. So these two uh, search operations can be easily achieved, right? And these are because uh, text and document both are having some inherent or uh, inherently different properties. We cannot say that you have document data into your system and you can achieve similarity search. You can achieve analytical search, right? Uh, so it is because we are not able to achieve some semantics, some details which will support these user operations. Right, so basically, if we have text, you can support analytical and similarity search. If you have document-based data and the, your corpus is having document, you need or you can only provide or support browsing and exploratory search on the GUI on the interface, right? That's what the meaning is. Next, uh, whenever you want to visualize, now because visualization is important, so, so, so this part is okay. Support means this is what we can achieve. This is what we can provide to the user. And if you want to uh, visualize, if you want to visualize something which you have retrieved, extracted, in the case of text data, you can uh, basically visualize either text strings or their semantics, semantic information, keywords, and how keywords are appearing, something like that. And then you can uh, uh, represent or showcase a text into the collection of meta text, something like that. So we will be uh, ex discussing these these properties uh, by using some again visualization tools. Similarly, in the case of document based repository or database, you could uh, visualize or we could uh, portray uh, those document and as a node and their relationship with the other document, right? Or you can simply uh, showcase or demonstrate the collection and group of document nodes and their possible sources. So again. So these two things are these two layers of information you can visualize in the both cases, right? On the GUI for the user. Now, how, how you can achieve? So if you are having or dealing with text data, you can easily adapt any clustering approach, right? So clustering approach, I think you are familiar with. And uh, along with the clustering, uh, you can adapt some sort of topic modeling. Topic means, topic means, topic could be a one simple keyword also. It can be a one simple interest, right? So it's like sport is a one topic. So within sport, sport or politics, you can have a lot of tweets. You can lot of you can have a lot of keywords, something like that. So you need to have some topics. So topic modeling can also help you to achieve this visualization, right? Similarly, in the case of documents, so if you are dealing with documents, or if you are having document corpus, clustering will help you. Clustering and classification. So both are now conventional techniques. So you can adapt any classification or clustering approach to visualize the document data which we have extracted. Now, what are the challenges you will face when we design a text visualization interface? Uh, it could be like a scalability because text text data is usually expanding in the nature. A lot of text has been added, a lot of uh, new terms has been added into the repository, something like that. So you need to you need to deal with the scalability. Second is recency, means uh, you need to have some, uh, you know, uh, the latest added uh, uh, entity should be there, right? So you need to consider the latest entry. So recency, maintaining recency is one of the issue in the, in the, in the form of uh, text visualization. And pre-processing, because uh, when we say text, it means it will have a lot of user uh, user, uh, you know, user published text data. So it will, it will create a lot of pre-processing efforts, right? Similarly, if you go to the document-based visualization in on the interface, uh, you need to deal with the different features of the documents, right? So like, like if you open any PDF, I mean, as well as the property, and so if you click, right click on the PDF file and see its property features, right? So we don't have this kind of awareness that, okay, each and every attribute will have some role, but whenever you will be dealing with some sort of, you know, collection of documents, you need some sort of features, right? And you need to have this idea that uh, this feature could have this role. So you can use one feature to achieve some objective, some purpose, right? So that's why these features has been placed. Or uh, maybe you can say in the up, up bottom of approach, uh, a company you know, who has designed a software like Adobe PDF Reader, they might have this idea that, okay, let's have these, these all 20 or 25 different attributes and now we are exploiting these 25 attributes to achieve 
to achieve some sort of visualization or analytics right uh, within that you can you need to deal with the inter document similarity in the document uh, uh, overlap so whenever we are planning to achieve document visualization you need to consider this inter document semantic properties like inter document overlap inter document similarity inter document gap something like that right so these these semantics will help you to achieve some sort of visualization then again you can have links and overlap so it is again coming from the inter document properties so these these challenges basically helps you to achieve some so whenever you are planning to achieve some visualization you will be dealing with these issues right so uh, because whenever we plan some sort of visualization some sort of uh, you know uh, data processing on the interface uh, you need to deal with these uh, possible challenges to achieve to achieve these sort of visualization to so, to achieve these sort of operations right so this is the this is the state of art problems we are having in the uh, text and document visualization now let's see how uh, probably a text visualization could be uh, uh, achieved right so i hope you can see this particular screen so this is a very interesting uh, text visualization example of text visualization so one thing you should be having very careful uh, perception that uh, in this interface uh, interface which is producing this this uh, this uh, kind of uh, portrayal of the text data it is not having any option to interact with right in the same in this gui you can have some zoom or rollover options on the bottom you can see in the bottom uh, there is a small window uh, placed uh, which is covering this whole duration whole i mean 12 months of 2014 right so uh, once you move this uh, you can say fish eye move fish eye view uh, so the data which is uh, presented right now on the screen on the interface it is coming from the year 2014 right it is not of uh, i mean it is not of different years it is of only one year which is 2014 so precisely on the top you can see the sunday i mean so different weekdays are uh, basically indicated by different coloring schemes right so <clears throat> basically yes there are a few options given like there is option called jump to is given you can simply click on a particular tab and reach or open the view data view of the particular year right and after that you can have a, their timeline on the bottom so timeline should indicate that okay i mean the year of the data and the frequency or maybe the pattern of a particular uh, event occurrence so this the objective of this interface is to uh, visualize or uh, present the average happiness score uh, right and it is coming from the data collected twitter data collected and based on some mathematical formulation of the happiness index value right so now you can see they have uh, basically placed a value starting from 5.8 to 6.4 this could be uh, any 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 uh, numeric value which is derived from some formulations that formulation is not important for us right now uh, but you can see this is how a text visualization could be uh, presented right so with uh, very limited options to interact limited options to uh, you know change the formation of visual presentation to the user so in this screen where there are very few limited options are given to the user to uh, to basically change the view to rearrange the content but data has been populated so this you cannot generate on a typical uh, a typical tool which is designed to generate graphs on the data this is an interface which has been designed by uh, the government of usa i mean it is it is basically one of the ministry one of the body of the government is working on the happiness index and uh, so you can see different days are uh, uh, pointed out right so this is uh, with the context of uh, united states of us actually so the tweets has been exploited tweets have been extracted from the twitter platform by using a gui uh, api actually not gui so uh, based on that after extracting the tweets uh, of maybe 2009 to 2014 they have prepared a formula for calculation of the happiness index then they have created and observe the appearance or occurrence of tweets right 
so text semantics they have utilized right and based on that they have calculated the possible ha average happiness index so you can see for the christmas day christmas day which is falling on madness day of the year right particular year they have portrayed that this christmas day is uh, basically uh, raising up to six point uh, maybe two nine or two eight something like that uh, and it is considered as the highest uh, happiness uh, having highest happiness score right so this is one typical view now if you go to the you know, same uh, scenario where we are having test data but data uh, with the structured nature so there is again different visualization uh, which has uh, some sort of uh, privilege some sort of options to the user so it is basically this G, uh, G, this particular interface is created to uh, generate the ranking of the different uh, institute different world institute based on few parameters right so here the information or the text details has been captured in structured data in the case of twitter it was not structured it was processed uh, uh, processed and pre-processed to, to generate some sort of analytics which text analytics but here the data is kept in a text and structured manner and after that they created this arrangement like uh, they have assigned the uh, weightage or percentage to the each and every block of attributes like academic reputation faculty arts immunity something like that and after that they have created the different set of attributes so this is called multi-attribute ranking approach so there are various tools available for that right uh, it is called mcdm something uh, and sometimes it is called madm right multi-attribute uh, decision making and multi criteria decision making and other so it is it is again a different area of research uh, it is having different techniques for achieving some sort of decision making right so uh, this this particular uh, interface is having capability of interaction now you can uh, drag a particular attribute you can easily drag a particular property to understand the rank of a particular institute so here princeton university's uh, details has been uh, uh basically uh, observe and now you can see there is a path indicated so if you click on the certain university it will uh, simply visualize the possible position of the institute on a different uh maybe attribute or maybe the division or maybe the classes so if you see the rightmost columns where uh, the different years have been placed 2011 2010 something like that so it, it can be easily understood that how a particular institute is performing and how it has performed in the previous years right so this is a simple view uh, and designed on the top of a simple data right so this is type of a situation where we are having text data right it could be uh, unstructured text it could be a structured text right again if you see there is a, a third possible type uh, where we are having the data structure data so you could have familiarity with the imdb database so this imdb database is widely available and most i mean many people have worked upon this database to uh, you know to validate their thesis or to validate their uh, research work so uh, imdb database is also one of the text uh, data which is kept in the structured database right there you can separate the properties there you can separate the uh, details into it and kept into the uh, structured database so this is one of the system called uh, high relevance and you can see there is something unique in this GUI so in this interface they have uh, placed uh, each and every object into a hexagon I mean highway structure is adapted and each and every object is uh, placed onto a an particular hexagons right so that's why it is called Hive. Hive term is adapted for that. And REL represents relevance, right? So each and every hexagon is placed. So if you see two hexagons placed nearby, it means they're having some uh, closeness with each other, right? So that closeness you should be calculating because you have captured the database entities, captured the text into the database. Now it is your responsibility to achieve, to define some relevance score. And based on that, each and every object is placed right so all the movie uh, details maybe you can say okay in the database of imdb there is a table called movie there is a table called country there is a table called person there is a table called director something like that genre something so if you consider you in the imdb database there are six different tables then you need to adapt 
six different colors right so that's what it is shown here also all the movie database all the movie entities have been you placed on the uh, green colored hexagons and all the genre based uh, values are placed in the uh, you know different colors and then they have uh, the actors in the red color then they have the country in the different color then they have person in the different color something like that right so uh, there is a search box in the center of the uh, center of the interface on the center of the interface so once they uh, enter some query all the possible matching entities matching uh, triples from each and every uh, table has been extracted and portrayed on the interface and if after this maybe in the second query if you observe that you need to further explore about the particular object particular uh, entity you can start your search something like that so it is providing you some sort of help to understand that okay for my user query these are the different types of entity has been uh, extracted right N like like nowadays if you explore into the you know, facebook if you search about a particular person in the search box it will show that okay post videos so all the different kind of data entities are listed category has been listed and after entering a keyword explore about the these entities you can explore into the uh, video post and photos something like that similarly in the twitter uh, interface if you search for an individual it will show the possible types of genre like right? like if you search for abc person it will help you to understand what is the position of that abc person into the politics into the sports so they are providing some category something like that so uh, in the case of high relevance uh, interface they are using these coloring schemes they are using these hexagons uh, uh, right i hope you are uh, uh, you are aware about the advantage of having this uh, uh, hexagon structure for the interface right so because in the com cellular communication or you know mobile computing this is one of the the first question which is being raised that okay why hexagon is suitable for presentation or uh, is why hexagon is is the most appropriate structure uh, not a structure meta structure to represent the area or maybe geographical reason right so it is it is having a question and is again having an answer for that question also right so going further so let's see again there is a last this is the last interface we are shown to you now if you see here uh, uh, <clears throat> this is one of the uh, graph created on the possible collection in the linkedin profile so there is a user called samir khan and if you want to analyze the possible position of the following followers and and basically all the possible connection of the other users with the user Samir Khan, so you can have this kind of visualization. So, so this is this is one of the example of for the document visualization. So here Samir Khan is one of the document. It is one of the node in the graph. So uh, by this visualization, you can understand the possible connection, their weightage, and the possible density. And uh, if you are having some capability on your interface, you can achieve the other capability to the user also right so this 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 kind of visualizations where a user or an individual document is placed in the node uh, it is often referred as a document visualization based system all right similarly this is something we have discussed in the previous class also so it is again considered as a document visualization because we have uh, understood uh, or we have analyze that okay what is the position of a research a document research article scientific article and how it is connected to the you know the both generations the past and the future right so this is how you can understand so this is a typical example of document visualization where object that document is the place of document is is basically clearly visible and other semantics of a document are also utilized like like uh, the list of references in a scientific literature will help you to identify the its past relation relation with the past uh, documents past uh, research works and its citation among the different research articles shows or indicates the its position in the futuristic research work so these these semantics are also being shown here so we have exploited so particularly in this interface called cytology uh, basically each and every semantic has been utilized 
right like the publication date of this article is placing it is also utilized right so because in the 2003 year there are a lot of documents has been published but there is this document which is appearing in the lower half of the 2003 articles right so because in each vertical we have placed the i mean i mean thousands of article but each document is having the publication months also so it has been appearing in the bottom second half right so it is like it is published in somewhere between june and july something like that so each and every uh, semantic of a document is utilized right that's very important part okay now now we are going to uh, discuss this important uh, aspect for which uh, we have to do this today's lecture so uh, basically uh, whenever we are designing uh, an interface right a interface for visual search or any kind of search so whenever we are designing uh, the visual interface we should be having these two uh, properties or principle very uh, clearly in, an, in our thought process first is called visual implications right so first principle or first set of property says visual implications so visual implications uh, indicate that how how we will be organizing placing and presenting all the details to the user that's one principle says so whenever you are planning to design an interface you should be careful about the different properties and all these properties are coming into the visual implication principle or dimension second uh, is visual accomplishment so visual accomplishment indicate that what are the different things you can achieve by these uh, these interfaces or this interface which you are trying to design so what are the different features you are uh, you are plugging into the interface uh, where user can achieve something you can perform something right so we have two separate aspects on a interface design right so if you explore inside this particular uh, uh, principle so let's let's uh, see how these different principles or both principles has been explained uh, so in this uh, visual implication uh, where we are uh, saying okay visual implication is uh, emphasizing on the uh, one of the aspect of the system which says okay how you are going to organize the retrieve details onto the interface for the user usage so uh, basically you can read out here so highlights of this principle is to uh, is, is the present presentation of the information in a certain way right how you will be presenting the details onto the GUI and how the relevant or relevant information is uh, basically highlighted how user is going to attract to a particular portion of the information on the GUI so these things are there so now you can if you read here so there's a last point which says the objective of this dimension is to enhance the user's perpetual learning right so this is a some kind of high end term but it will be helping uh, to the end user in the aspect of gaining the knowledge gaining the understanding about the information right something like that so if you can read so these are the three broad properties so you can read visual organization uh, then we have visual signaling then they then we have visual transformation so these are the three broad criteria you can say so whenever we think about visual implication of interface that how you will be uh, visualizing or placing each and everything on the GUI or interface these are the thing uh, these are the three criteria so first criteria we say visual organizations now organizations means you will be organizing so I mean suppose you have different text data now how you will be placing these text data on the GUI so the first aspect within visual organization is called visual grouping how these different text will be grouped right so uh, naturally you can have your own approach for grouping the text data like in one of the system like uh, URL system which we have discussed in the previous class the different keywords appearing in the top 20 documents has been placed in one particular portion with some color coding right so naturally all the keywords which has been extracted are placed by using the frequency and by using them thus increasing color code something like that 
so how you are grouping how you are uh, placing all the extra details into one group so that you should be carefully thinking of right similarly to grab the user attention so you have placed the different elements different information different data into different different positions on the interface now how to grab the user attention because I mean, user will be looking at the interface and you should have some mechanism to highlight the important parts and highlight the most relevant part of the data on the interface that you should also think of then uh, after this because in the GUI you have placed three four different types of information on the on the basis of some approach now there should be some hint there should be some approach to indicate the flow that user should start looking at this portion first then he should go to the second part then he should go to the third part something like that because if you are not having this mechanism if you're not having this approach onto the GUI you, it is very it is it is sometimes difficult for the user to understand that okay which information should i read first which is the second and which is the last part of the information they should be reading or thinking or understanding what right so uh, after this so visual organization talks about three things how you will be grouping the information and how you will be having some mechanism to grab the user attract attention and the last how you will be helping user to read the information follow the sequence right so after this first criteria the second criteria is visual signaling so visually signaling says you should have a proper or you should have a suitable meta structure a structure to portray the information like in the high relevance system we have seen this hexagon is adapted it is naturally from it is naturally based on the uh, decision of the uh, this this person who are who have designed this uh, high relevance system so they have adapted hexagons there are various uh, interfaces has been designed where this triangle his triangle is used uh, circle is used intent radar is used so in in different interfaces you can have different structures to place the information right because so if you adapt a triangle circle and uh, rectangle structures to represent the three different types of information naturally so that's why so similarly you can have experimentation with different structure to indicate the different types of information or data so it is very important i mean it is not compulsory to have always different structures but if you are having different types of data different categories of data you can adapt a structure right so that is there the last part of the visual implication last criteria of the visual implication is it is the uh, it is the options it is the you know capability on the interface through which this whole visualization which is appearing right now in front of me on or in the front of user can be modified right so you should have some mechanism to uh, modify or transform the current visualization right you should have something on the gui so there should be one simple click there should be some drag and drop option on the interface to modify each and every arrangement right it's like like if you have uh, three broad columns on the interface you should have uh, this option on the interface to drag one one vertical bar to the first position and first to last position, something like that so you can easily place or transform the visualization by having some options that's that should be the important part because if your user is feeling that okay this should be the sequence of information sequence of the data so this option will help that user to organize the visual elements on the interface right so visual implication is having these three criteria uh, naturally if you want to implement each, each criteria and each feature each activity you should have some approach so these approach or these options are well placed and uh, well defined like in the grouping to group the data you can have either proximity based approach similarity based approach continuity based approach closer based approach right so these are the conceptual notations so whenever you want to implement the visual grouping of the data you can adapt one of it so these are another four these are not only four we can have fifth and sixth approach also similarly in the visual attention criteria 
you can have some a mechanism to locate emphasize to create cluster so these are the conceptual terms only right so by these uh, mechanisms you can achieve uh, some sort of you know option some sort of visual features to achieve visual attention criteria similarly in the visual sequence you can uh, because visual sequence is, is not explained here but it is basically explaining uh, the ob uh, obvious way of following the information elements so you can either provide rank or that you can emphasize something or you can place an identifier on the top right so these are the basic uh, you can say the operation through which you can achieve the criteria right similarly if you go to the next uh, dimension which is uh, visual uh, accomplishment and uh, this dimensions uh, this dimension is basically emphasizing this uh, role of the possible operation uh, which user can achieve on a interface so uh, this basically uh, emphasizes that uh, what are the particular types of visual implications that visual task may carry out i mean what are the different operations a user can achieve right so now you can see so whenever we have a interface a visual interface or, or, or maybe interface we could have four possible types of uh, you know aims or objectives the first basic with the basic uh, objective the basic expectation a user can have from interfaces he wants some elaboration some description about the data description about the information object from a gui that's the simple the basic expectation a user could have from the gui or from the interface second possible expectation could be summarization so i uh, should um, whether a particular interface is able to provide some summarized information to the user or not right something like that so that's what the google system is giving to you right whenever we search for something it will provide a brief detail brief summary about the source maybe that that information that part of information is coming from the very first page within that uh, link or within that url but it is helping you to understand the internal details so your interface should provide some sort of summarized details right now uh, along with this so these these two some elaboration and summarization are two basic operation two basic expectation of a user from a interface there are two a uh, high end or maybe advanced expectation like uh, user wants to perform search right so how your system is helping a user uh, to achieve his search task to uh, perform his search right that's the high end expectation second uh, how your visual uh, interface is helping him or how this visual interface is predicting some data objects predicting or recommending some data objects that is the high end expectation so user could have this expectation this expectation also that during the search uh, this interface will show me some of the possible predicted uh, you know data objects so this is the possible high end expectation so under this visual accomplishment we have these four different types of operation which a interface should provide to the user right so whenever we are designing our interface we should provide these option on to the interface to help the user right so naturally like in the case of elaboration uh, you can have some mechanism to provide the explanation or maybe internal details about the objects to the user so that our information or data can be elaborated to the user similarly for summarization you can have some uh, uh, implementation task or implementation approach uh, through which you can provide a summary to the user on the interface so for these different operations you need to build some uh, mechanism some processing component on to your interface to present so because information has been extracted now after extracting you can visualize it and along with the visualization on the same interface you should have some portion some part of interface for these operations so you should have provisions to support one of the operation in the visual accomplishment right so either it is understanding or it is visual exploration so this is uh, this is these these summaries has been created 
from the different literature work. So you can always add some of the operation onto the these these four different types of accomplishment, right? So naturally, in the future, we will be having more types of operations. Like here, we are having four. We could have fifth, sixth, seventh in the future also, right? So that is always a, a, a evolving part of the system. But these these are the four basic uh, expectation which we can achieve on the interface for the user support, right? So whenever we are designing an interface, we should be placing the information on the GUI, obviously. And when we place information on the GUI, it is the responsibility of system designer to provide these operations so that so that user can have this privilege to perform something because visual accomplishment is the portion of the system where actual search interaction has been conducted right so with this i am closing uh, today's